Do we remove the ring when we use the, the facility? Yeah. Let's go on <clears throat> on the questions, it's always important and never to not ask them but a lot of… a lot of what's being taught has an immense amount of just common sense. So when we talk about this is a sunnah, this has power, this has a, a nobility. Yes, anything that has power, anything that has a holiness, anything that, that you hold as a reverence and you revere it as something holy, don't take it to the toilet. So that means then seal it and cover it, put it into your pocket, take it off. And same with the Naqshbandi turban, that's why our turban is designed not like uh, the other tariqahs. That this is a, the made up turban for more formal but our style was to have the Taj and the wrap. Why? And the wrap was just a simple you would wrap it yourself quickly so that if you use the facility you don't go into the facility with the turban. You're talking about the crown of and the representation of Sayyidina Muhammad common sense is then you wouldn't be seen in a toilet wearing uh, that, that crown and that nobility. So that's why it was supposed to be made as unwrappable. So you quickly unwrap it, put the turban cloth aside and you go with the cone and it's preserved and your head is covered. So anything we think we're going to go into the bathroom with, if it's holy don't go. You hide it and put it into a pocket and, and don't take holiness into that, into that region. And the taweez it's wrapped. So that's the same concept as I was saying that put the ring in a pocket because as soon as you put it in your pocket it's wrapped and sort of not an open for everyone to, to look at it. The taweez is already wrapped. It's designed for the bathroom. So you're wearing the taweez as a protection from going inside the bathroom for the shaitans that are there, that's when you need it the most. So that's when you wear extra taweez to go into the washroom because that's where you're going to get attacked and, and a lot of uh, sobats are going to come to you because that's where his khutbah is standing there. <laughs> um, I'm about and then he start teaching you, teaching you and you come out there with all sorts of difficulty. But it's not waterproof the taweez. As Alaikum Sayyidi, I've been wanting to get an Imam Al Sharif and I wanted to ask if the Naqshbandi cone hat is necessary. Yeah, I want to get a Naqshbandi cone. And is it necessary, the Imam Al Sharif? No, you can wear anything you want but it's designed by Shaykh Nazim and the ones that, that we all get is a very hard cone. So that it's not flopping over otherwise if you try to just put your topi or your kufi that's soft, as soon as you wrap with your turban it's falling all over the place. You can wrap uh, your head without even that if you're like traveling or for umrah or for hajj we just wrap it regular with the regular kufi because it's coming off all the time. But this, this style is meant for us to be able to lift it and put it off and take it off and wear the the kufi under for washing and put the turban back on. But if you don't have access to it then any any top that you put on and wrapping the turban and the holiness of the sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad isn't actually wrapping and putting a turban upon the head. And then it multiplies the salah that anytime you revive a sunnah and, and, and bring out its realities it multiplies the salah. As Salaamu dearest Sayyidi, forgive my lack of ignorance but could Sayyidi no expand on nafs e rahmah? How should a beginner practice breathing especially during meditation and daily zikr practices? The question was nafas e rahmah yeah. and how to, how to breathe? Yes, for a beginner. Yeah, for the, the breathing and actual, uh, actual steps of that it, uh, it, it, you just have to breathe and concentrate. We can't go too deep into all the, the, the different steps of the meditation otherwise we'll be here for a couple hours just talking about the different practices. But we have if you email us at helpme 
at nurmuhammad.com we send you a link for the meditation which has the basic steps of how to make the tafakkur, how to sit and, and to do your breathing and you breathe in and breathe out, be conscious of the breath, listen to some salawats or Qur'an so that you bring a power to your ears and quiet the mind. And then bi zikrullah zikruhu that you're breathing in and out and feel the energy of and the positive light and the life force that everyone breathes in. And that see all type of bad character and darkness breathing out, that Ya Rabbi send this light in and every type of bad character let it to come out. And then you practice your conscious breathing and, and keep practicing and practicing until the breath becomes more and more energized. With every breath coming in you feel its qudra and its energy and then that simultaneously you're connecting with the shaykhs and asking that, let the light of the shaykh to come and enter my heart. That please bring the light into my heart and Allah is saying, Itaqullah wa kunu ma sadiqeen. Anything that Allah is asking you in Holy Qur'an, Allah doesn't care about physicality. So then what, what does Allah mean by, have a consciousness and keep the company of truthful servants. People think, oh that Allah is asking us to keep the company only in the physical world? If Allah doesn't care for the physical world then He's drawing our attention to something much more powerful than that is that you should be with them spiritually at all times. If it's the heavenly kingdom you want and you love then why aren't the heavenly servants all around you? Have a consciousness means all your, your five senses should have been geared towards the unseen servants. That I want these shaykhs, I want their ruhaniyat and their spirituality and I want to connect with them. And I want all these senses you gave to me my Lord, I want to use them to be with them, to be with your servants. And then you use your hearing and shut the hearing so that you can hear them and feel them in front of you and you can begin to hear them even teaching you and talking to you. And that's what Allah's drawing importance is from malakut. Wallah would say only for you know keep the company of, of pious servants only while you're on earth or the people whom are trying to excel they use their earthly time to make their heavenly connection. So that when they leave this earth they've already made their connection and all the relationship that they have made of the heavenly kingdom, those are the ones who will be greeting them when they take their last breath on earth, inshaAllah. Sayyidi, how may I make baya? I have been practicing the awrad and this is my first khatim khawajgan. Yeah, you can email us at helpme at nurmuhammad.com and uh, inshaAllah in the next few days we can recite again the bayat. I think every, every couple of weeks we recite the baya out loud. You make intention to, to take the bayat and alhamdulillah. You email me and we'll also send you the words for the bayat. You recite the bayat and asking Ya Rabbi I want to be with Naqshbandiya under the Sultanate of uh, Sultanin Awliya Ma Shaykh Abdul Faiz al Dagestani, Sultan Awliya Shaykh Muhammad Nazim Haqqani and his representative on earth right now Mawlana Shaykh Muhammad Adil and uh, the big awliyaullah like Mawlana Shaykh Isham and Shaykh Atnan that the nazar to all be upon us and that we're intending to be under their nazar and to be in the Naqshbandiya way inshaAllah. But for you to be watching you're already Naqshbandi. Now for your nafs to accept that's a good step so you can email us, recite the bayat and then remind us in a few nights and maybe we'll recite it again, I think we did last week so we'll recite it again in another few days inshaAllah. Sayyidi, if it's important to know, can we absorb other people's anger? If it's important to know? Yes. Yes. Yeah I think we, this is the whole theme of being energy beings. I was talking with somebody the other day and said that, you know that all of this creation are energy beings. These poor animals in the zoo, you know more and more aggression and more and more angry animals because they're energy beings. Can you imagine that all day long and they're so super sensitive to energy 
that all day long violent, angry, bad character people visiting, 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 taunting, haunting and, and ridiculing these creatures. You don't think that they're absorbing all the energies of these people? And that it's, it's shocking to people when the lion wants to go out and eat everybody in the audience or the, the elephant breaks the village and said, that's enough. Allah's showing us that you're all energy beings and you're going to either give off energy and you're going to absor absorb energy. So that's it. That's the main reason for teaching all of this tafakkur and contemplation. Because from what people see and, un and unseen are far more dangerous. In the last days when the immensity of negative energy is everywhere, how are you combating that negative energy? Are, are, what are people thinking? That they're going to go and, and get a shot and as a result of that shot everything is finished? Because these are drive-through philosophy. That I don't have to do anything, I don't have to pray, I don't have to make wudu, I don't have to do anything to build my energy. I merely will drive through somewhere, they'll give me a shot and all the punishment of the earth will stop. Probably not, you just opened yourself to a different type of punishment. But the reality is that these are the signs that, that Allah has given that Sayyidina Muhammad has explained. And I should be following the sunnah, I should be keeping my wudu, I should be keeping my salah, I should be doing all my practices, all my readings, everything that I possibly can. I should be meditating for an abundance of power and energy to be dressed upon me, to push away and to combat every type of negativity and as I do all of that then Allah to bless me and dress me, that I at least took the steps necessary and that Allah is sufficient for the believer. But if we do nothing and say that, you know, hasbunallah, I'm relying on Allah, Allah said, well how come you don't hold to respect the sunnah of my most beloved? You don't cover your hair, you don't have the ring, you're, you're not keeping wudu, you're, you're not doing all the things that my beloved Sayyidina Muhammad came and struggled to develop upon this earth as a protection. And we do that as an ihtiram and a love for Prophet And when you do things with love that's why you do them. When someone doesn't want to cover, someone doesn't want to do, someone doesn't want to perform, they think that it's just, you know, I can do what I want. It's really what it's saying is that you don't hold Sayyidina Muhammad to a very high degree. They don't care what your mouth says but when you do what you do out of love, that you brought it, I'm going to do my best to live and die by it as a sign of my love for you as a weak servant, I don't want to die without my beard. Just so that I can greet you and say that on this earth I tried, I struggled. That you, you, you do what you do out of love and leave for Sayyidina Muhammad to reach to us and to… and grant us a forgiveness. As we said before when your ch children copy you and they say they want to be like you, it's from a love and you would do anything possible to protect them because they're showing in telling their love to you. What could be deeper and greater than thinking that I'm not doing it to be boastful but I'm doing it for my love for you. Say, Ya Rasul Kareem, grant me a strength, grant me an honour, let me to die in a, in a position of honour when now they're, they're people are dying and being burned and, and putting through every type of difficulty. Don't let me to be in that type of difficulty, grant me an honour. Save, save me for the sake of my sunnah. So it has an immense reality that let them to find my body with a ring upon it, let them to find me with a, with a, a sunnah upon myself and that's how that I would be raised to Allah's Divinely Presence. So we do what we do out of love and try not to use your head and say, I can shorten this, I can cut this, I can leave this. There's nothing about anything to do with that, this is about muhabbat and love. But I don't know what condition this earth is coming into but for my love Ya Rabbi grant me a protection. Shield me from things I can't even imagine to begin to pray for. 
But all I know is I'm doing what I'm doing out of love and I know that your power is immense and your love for Sayyidina Muhammad is immense. And let that love guide me, protect me and shield me from the things I know and mostly from the things I don't know that are after me Ya Rabbi. <clears throat> Sayyidi, Sayyidi, how to think about Jibreel salam in meditation? The angelic reality of the meditation first you have to have connected with the shaykh. So I, I think somebody emailed about the same thing and Sayyidina Jibreel's Ruhul Quduz or what's his name. Those are nice to read about at, at, at one level but first level is to make the connection with the shaykhs. If you don't establish that relationship and the chain what happens is that people become like a pharaoh and they start to say, you know, I'm, I'm talking with Jesus Christ, I'm talking with this, I'm talking with this one and that one and the mind has taken over their meditation and their spiritual practices. So it's more important that I'm sitting every day and I'm trying to connect with the shaykh, I'm asking for the faiz of the shaykh to enter into the heart. I feel the energy that entering me, I'm asking to be dressed by that reality. Then I'm asking for the muhabbat and love to begin to emanate within my heart and then I ask to be nothing. When I'm asking to be in the fana, I'm nothing, I'm nothing, I'm nothing, dress me from the light, dress me from the light. And in that nothingness they'll begin to train and through that spiritual training then they'll begin to teach you then to read the levels of the heart. And when you read the levels of the heart you focus on the qalb, the level of the qalb and you ask for lights and these lights to come into the heart and that you're asking first because you're in the connection of your shaykh, you're in the fana of the shaykh and you're asking from your shaykh that please let us to connect with Sayyidina Jibreel and the light of Sayyidina Jibreel to enter my heart. So it has a process if you just pick it up and say that I just want to talk to Sayyidina Ibrahim and how do I do that, that's something different and that you, re you run the the danger of everything you do becomes nafsani. You know the most imitated Prophet on earth right now is Sayyidina Isa salam. They're not connecting with Sayyidina Isa when they think they're speaking to Jesus. It's just the ego has gotten in to their practices and before you know it they start to say that they are Sayyidina Isa. They say they're Jesus and they're walking around and that's why it's called the Dajjal and it's called the, the Antichrist because there's so many anti ones of him. And that's the danger when they teach the muraqabah and the tafakkur is first make the connection with the shaykhs, annihilate yourself in the coordinates like a GPS. That I feel the light of the shaykh is in me, I feel that I'm going through all these testings and difficulties and I'm consistent, I have control of my anger, I have good characteristics and I feel that I've entered in now to the fana of the shaykh and when I'm gone and I disappear and I feel the presence of the shaykh very much present within me. He sees through my eyes, he hears through my ears, he speaks through my tongue, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Sayyidi, um, As is it okay to pet a dog, is it haram? Also I'm a Muslimah and woman, I don't know oftentimes want to hug me and I don't mind but is it safe for me energy wise? Can we repeat that again? I didn't hear that. <laughs> I didn't want to. Is it okay to pet a dog? And is it haram? And to, 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 to be hugged by Muslimah? <laughs> um, is it okay to pet a dog? Is it haram? Also I'm a Muslimah and women I don't know oftentimes want to hug me and I don't mind but is it safe for me energy wise? Oh okay, okay, I thought yeah that, that's something different, all right. <laughs> yeah that didn't make sense at all. So you're, you're a, it's a woman, she wants to pet a dog and is it okay for other women to hug a woman? And I think it's better just phrase that, is it okay for people to hug each other? Mm. And probably not, we're in the midst of a pandemic so that's even more that Allah wants us to keep a distance. And there's an energy convergence on everyone whether they feel depressed, they're sad, they're, they're, they're just mentally not well. They're energy beings, that's the whole theme of all our talks every Thursday, Friday, Saturday. As a result of energy beings 
then the more that we interact with people there's going to be now a conveyance of you're taking on burdens and they're taking on your good light. Especially if the other person doesn't practice anything and you're doing a lot of practices, they'll take your light and you'll take their burdens as an exchange. So it's you have to be sort of cautious of that. Family and, and relatives you maybe can't not do that so you, you have to do that on a family basis. But even during the pandemic it's best just to keep some sort of a distance so that to have a, a protection from difficulty. As, as far as uh, petting of a dog, uh, Al-Azhar came out with a fatwa and they ruled that the dog is not haram and that the, the, the part of the dog to avoid was the saliva and that if it does touch you to go and whoosh inshaAllah and to not have that saliva on you before you pray. But as far as the, the petting of the hair of it, then it shouldn't be something that would uh, negate one's ability to pray and this is from Al-Azhar, they issued their fatwa on, on the dog and that it's not something haram and… But you know there's other opinions in, in different madhabs, if you find it to be something questionable and you don't want to then try to abstain from that. If you want to pet the dog and just wash your hands before you pray. As Salaamu Sayyidi, um, it was announced about storing food for 90 days, is it time, can we spread the word here in Pakistan? However I told this many people and they say let it well, come. <laughs> and who, who announced to store food for 90 days? Um, Shaykh Muhammad. Oh just recently? I don't know there's a… There's that's what the question is. I don't know if, if, if that's… He, he issued for them to store food for 90 days then they can go around and, and say that Shaykh Muhammad said to store food for 90 days. I don't know if spreading anything in Pakistan would make you to be popular because <laughs> they, they have so many shaykhs, so many different you know uh, ulama, it's best the, the tariqah something individual for ourselves that uh, if it's something I believe I have to do, I do it myself and it's important for me just to live by what I believe. It's not my ability to propagate you know these types of things that do this, do that, do these orders like this because somebody may become frightened and buy things that they don't have the ability to afford and then if something or nothing happens then you're going to have a lot of controversy. But if it's something you believe then it's important for your faith to come alive and to do what you believe inshaAllah, that's what's important. But Mawlana Shaykh Nazim's philosophy was to live your house always with food. So it's I don't know but if you can do 90 days worth of food but to always have your house stored with supplies. Preferably uh, supplies that are non-perishable, canned goods, crackers, different food items that you can eat, you store a certain area and from what you take of it you always replenish, always replenish and make sure that your supplies are always there so that your house is like a little bit of a market and has all of the essential items that you, you need. InshaAllah to keep you safe but as far as spreading you know the shaykh ordered this, shaykh ordered that and start spreading that around, it, 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 there's, it's a, you're in the land of too many shaykhs and you'll get a, all sorts of uh, difficulties back from other people that don't tell us what to do or try to question it and debate you and, and if you're not versed on how to debate that then it can create a difficulty. But what you can do is take our videos and share them. <laughs> But then let me deal with the people. You send the video, if they don't like it they can contact us. But at least the teachings are right out there, send the videos, share the links, go to Telegram, make a group, send it out to all the different groups and spread the teachings of the ones who already are teaching. But when you try to spread it yourself then you're going to have a little bit of difficulty and pressure upon yourself that maybe you're not prepared for. 
So it's best to always just take the link and share it, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Ya Sayyidi, with all respect, I want to ask what kind of attar and bakhur can be used to get rid of negative energy? What type of attar and bakhur can be used to get rid of negative energy? We have an article on Isfan and the power of Isfan, the wild ruh seed, it's called the wild ruh seed, R-U-E and the bukhurs that were used for reading and, and cleansing an area for energy. That the mu'min beings they like that smell and the result of the mu'min beings coming, the virtue of them being present pushes away every type of negativity. So fragrancing the house with frankincense, with myrrh, with uh, the different bukhurs, with the wild ruh seed which is uh, isfan, isfan, then these are the sunnah and these are uh, an oud, the oud that the, the non-favourable entities they don't like the, the scent of oud. So all of those have an immense importance and to take these ouds also and you can put them in spray bottles and the actors that are sold you put a little bit in a little spray bottle, you mix it up nicely and you fragrance the area so that the, everything has a sort of beautific fragrance and beautific smell inshaAllah. And that any particular area that you feel something is not good, the energy is not good or they're, they're coming upon your being and you don't feel the, the energy positive upon your feet and then you put water mixed with tea tree oil. And again these beings don't like tea tree oil because of its fragrance and, and what it, it does to them. So you put tea tree oil in a little sprayer with water, so this much tea tree, this much water, shake it up and you spray it on certain things and you feel the energy of negativity is dispersed. As far as bukhurs and smokes then the fragrances and, and the bukhurs, the isfand and the frankincense, myrrh, oud, inshaAllah all the traditional religious fragrances. And none of the sage and none of the rosemary, none of these Indian things, they all have incantations upon them that bring very bad spirits. The spiritual world lives within these fragrances. So everything has to be from Islamic sources, never from Indian sources. They, they have incantations into their incense sticks and into their products. That Sai Baba was a big shaitan, so anybody who were buying those things they were putting incantations into those products and distributing around the world. And anyone from spiritual teaching understand those beings hide within those and when the person ignites them it's a ceremonial sort of uh, bringing of them. And when they come they're very difficult to, to get rid of. So everything with us alhamdulillah is from a halal source that to, to get from the Islamic sources and Islamic fragrances and not definitely not from them their temples and all their, their, their insignia upon that inshaAllah. Sayyidi what is the reality of Rabit as Sharif? The noble connection, the, what is the reality of the Rabit as Sharif is the noble connection. And there's articles on our website and you know the Nur Muhammad is an immense like encyclopedia of spirituality. And you go to the search engine and you just type in the words that you want, you type in Rabita and you get the articles on the Madad and the Rabita Sharif is the, the noble connection. How to connect with this golden chain is then the Madad and on the app it has the recitation for the Madad. So you get the app and recite the Madad on a daily basis, every time you recite it it's like you're, you're hitting the chain that goes all the way into the heavens of these shaykhs that you're calling their name and you're asking for support. And that support then is, is their nazar, that they say, oh a student is calling my name and my, my nazar upon them, my soul's gaze upon you and from what Allah gave to me I dress you and give you. And then making the muraqabah and how to make your connection and connect your heart so that you can gain the fires of that chain. That if you're connecting with the shaykh who's teaching you, he's the link that links you to an entire chain. So they send him out and whom connect, he's connecting them to that entire chain because that faiz is already coming through him and going out. So that's, that's what keeps the shaykhs 
protected is their rabita and their connection with the chain. So imagine like a deep sea diver and everybody of this dunya is on the bottom of the ocean. So when the shaykhs send out representatives and certified representatives of the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad they're all safe in the heavens. So they're the people on the boat on the top of the ocean. So as a result they throw that one into the water but because he's connected with the tube to breathe and to be supported he walks the bottom of the ocean picking up all the people and dealing with them. And through that fires and through that power that reaching to him he's able to, to do that work otherwise he wouldn't be at the bottom of the ocean doing all those things. So that's one way of us to visualize that the shaykhs are at the top and they're sending support, sending the knowledges, sending the realities to gather all of these people whom are dispersed. They're at the bottom of the ocean because they're not alive, they're actually dead to this dunya. And they're coming down to revive people and lift them up and remind them of the heavenly kingdom that lies above this ocean of this dunya. Sayyidi, can, can women wear these zikr rings also and can we wear more than one? Yeah, for the sunnah for the women can be different. They can wear the, the zikr rings, they can wear the, the rings for protection. But the sunnah of the teaching of the stone is still the same. So when they, when they wear the firuz and the turquoise and they try to wear the turquoise jewelry or necklace it has an immense healing, has an immense power for nazar and, and protection from, from uh, the bad energy that affects us in everything. The reason things don't get accomplished, the reason that we have difficulty, the reason we have uh, all sorts of sicknesses and ailments is enmity and envy. So when Prophet is teaching that if you wear this stone it has a zikr and a reality that Allah has given it its reality then it has an immense protection. If it takes away the nazar you may feel yourself more energized to accomplish what you have to accomplish. The nazar of people is so powerful that people don't understand it. They don't know why they're getting sick all the time. They don't know why they're not feeling good or they're feeling down or their eyes are red and they have headaches. So we are energy beings until we understand <coughs> the depth of our reality and what Allah has given to us of tools. Our wudu, our salah, our, our uh, the, the sunnah of wearing all these things, a covering of the head. These are all an armor in which for us to deal with each other and deal on this earth. You armor yourself and fortify yourself as a spiritual warrior so that you can go on this earth, you can deal with people, not be affected by people, you do your work and accomplish what you have to accomplish in life. But when people leave all of those, leave their understanding of energy and then they're just like, I don't know why I feel sick all the time, I have a headache, my eyes are all red and, and I'm just, I don't feel like I want to do anything. Sayyidi, um, how to keep the way of gratitude and being thankful in the times of severe testing and difficulties? How to keep the way of gratitude and to show ourselves to be thankful in the time of severe difficulties? I think we talked, uh, it was last week that that was the, the talk on, on gratitude and, and that was the, the understanding that we, we show gratitude in everything that we do. And, and don't, don't be silent, don't sit and be silent and, and watch a video and not say thank you, not say hello, not, not give a thumbs up and just you know this world then just kind of passes us. Allah wants us to show our thankfulness, wants us to have shukr because the opposite of shukr is to be na shukr, to be not thankful. Then Allah says, he's not even thankful whatever he's learning, whatever he's being taught, whatever I give him, everything will carry through to that servant to be a non-thankful servant. So I don't know if anyone has children when, and that's why having a family and having children was half our religion because whatever I'm… my relationship with Allah I will see that in my relationship with my children. 
And I can understand Allah's position to a degree by interacting with my children. If all day long I give my children everything, everything they ask for, here you go, 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 not one thank you. And then not even a thank you at the end then to even come against and this was that, this was horrible, this was rotten, you did this again, it's like this. Then you say, okay you know I know how to punish you and then I'm not going to give you anything for a week. And then we understand, oh my gosh that um, this is this interaction I have with my children, uh, am I doing this with my Lord? And that's when the servant to be uh, understanding that what I'm asking for my children why I'm not doing it for Allah All these parents that, that their children don't listen to me, my children don't listen to me, my children you know are rude to me. I ask them to come back and say that, uh, have you listened to everything that Allah asked you? No, I don't pray. So why were you expecting that your children would listen to you but you didn't listen to anything from Allah? Because our life is very reflective. So at least the purpose of family was for us to get a sense and understanding, oh my gosh how I'm dealing with my family and with my children, what I want from them and what I would expect from them and the gratitude that I would expect from them. I should be first doing that always to my Lord, thank you for what I have, thank you for this knowledge you gave, thank you for this money you gave, thank you for the food you gave, thank you for the, the, the people in my life, thank you for everything and thank you for all the bad you kept away. because. You don't know what kind of storm is really heading towards people that Allah kept away with Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. We only saw some of the things that got through but the greater part of the iceberg Allah has kept away that would have obliterated our lives and our all that is dear to us. But with Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem Allah kept everything away. So our life is a continuous shukr, shukr, shukr Ya Rabbi that if I'm not shukr enough that forgive me, forgive me. And put into my heart to be conscious of everything Ya Rabbi so that I show my thankfulness to you and have pity upon me and mercy to be dressed upon me, inshaAllah. And little steps, it's the little things in life that have the greatest reality, not the big things. The detail is in the little, little, little things in life that we should be very thankful and, and make sure that all those little things are done. Because we don't know what Allah will grant from these little actions. People think, well I pray and Allah is happy with me. No, Imam Ghazali was praying all his life, trying to reach all realities all his life and you know thinking, well it, it's not really happening. I'm not feeling what these other shaykhs are talking about, I'm not feeling these things. And it was Mila the Nabi it was the night of the Mawlid the Nabi but before that he had a great amount of doubt that how come things are not opening, not opening, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, I'm doing this. And for Mawlid the Nabi Allah sent him a fly and at that time there was an inkwell where you would write from not a fountain pen, it was an inkwell you had to dip it and then write and dip it. And as he was about to dip his pen a fly came and began to start to drink from the ink and he said, you know that you're an amazing creation of Allah and I'm a creation of Allah and for the sake of Mawlid and Nabi he thought to his heart, I won't disturb this fly and he let the fly to take his drink and take his fill before he put his pen. As soon as the fly finished and went and he went to put his pen, he said, this action that you did today was very dear to Allah. And everything that you had asked from Allah will now be opened upon your heart. And he says from that point on his heart opened and flourished with all its realities. So it means Allah is looking you know for the, the, the greatest sign are the small ones because they show the true character of somebody. Not you know lining up only for salah, everybody is watching you to pray that's maybe you had to do that. But what you carry of, of your real character that nobody sees. And it's the small actions that you, you, you sort of dot your I's and you cross your T's and those are just between you and Allah He finds those to be very dear and those are the actions that open the reality for many awliya. And there's another story of a, a wali who was going for hajj, he wasn't a wali yet but a pious servant. He's walking and, and doing many good things and walking and going all the way for his hajj and accepting and hoping that Allah is going to accept his hajj. 
he came across a well and put his bucket down and began to drink the water making his zikr and a dog came and the dog looked like it was… had been famished in the desert and was in serious need of water. And that servant of Allah looked at the dog and felt the sorrow of this, this creature is going to die without water. He put the book, bucket immediately down and began to give water to the dog. And that was before the, the thinking that, you know, the dog, who cares for a dog, what's the importance of a dog? And this is a man going to go see Allah And again, as soon as he gave the water to the dog, a voice that came into his heart that this action made all your hajj to be accepted because Allah saw the sincerity of your character and the goodness of your character that when nobody's around you felt a sadness and a pity for this creature. So th this is tariqah's teaching, it's, it's the small actions that Allah is, is at a continuous state of, of vigilance to see if if that character is really, really of, of the nature that Allah wants before He opens His heavenly kingdom upon their heart inshaAllah. InshaAllah bi hurmati Muhammad and Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. Click the link now to subscribe.